Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I hand make scrunchies and bows and I've been doing so for eight years. And at the start of January, I changed my whole studio around again. <laughs> so today I'm going to finally show you the studio and explain sort of what things are and a bit more in depth than my other video, which was more of a quick look around. I didn't really say much about what things are and why they're there. And the reason I'm starting it today is because I finally finished my scrunchie wall. It took me a while, but it's finished. I'd also like to thank Daniel Wellington for sponsoring this video, but I'll talk about them later. Okay, as you can tell, it's so sunny in here. My eyes are burning. Uh, it is, it's early, it's early. So I thought it'd be best to film early. I don't know, because it's too bright for me to film like where I usually film. So I'm just going to really show you around, do a tour. And then I've also got a heap of questions that you guys asked me on my Instagram last night. So I'm going to go through them as well in the second half of this video. Let's get started. I can't actually show you the full room because it's actually glary as. So I might add a little snippet in soon of what it actually looks like without the massive glare. But this is one side. We've got another side here. Got my table, which is super glary. My scrunchy wall. And then the cupboards as well. I'm gonna start over this side because I can actually see. So for starters, I have three sewing machines sitting up here. Well, technically one's an embroidery machine. I know that I might get questions about the Singer one, which is the one behind here. That is what I used to use quite often. That's why I changed to. I took this one in for a service and then I started using this one full time uh, and then I got the industrial. But I had two of them and one of them broke so I took it back and they just gave me a refund from Spotlight so that was really good of them. The embroidery machine which is Alna, I honestly don't really use it anymore. I used to do personalised bows and scrunchies but I don't really offer that anymore. It's just too hard to do it to keep up with normal orders plus personalized. Got the Alna Experience 550. This was my second machine. My first machine I had for about four years. It was a $100 machine and it broke uh, after a lot of use. It's great. It just is really slow. <laughs> um, this machine here, this one is a heavy duty one. I really like the heavy duties. Um, it's definitely nothing compared to an industrial, but it was really good um, while I was using it. The sign that's from The Etched Co. They are based in Gippsland. They're actually based really close to me, so they usually drop off anything I order. And then we've got the fabric wall, which again, super sunny in here. Sorry. Got heaps of fabric in here. I will be clearancing off a heap of these though, because... I've just decided I don't want a heap of these fabrics anymore options on the website. I've already got 400, but I don't even have half of these up yet. So yeah, I want to get rid of a heap of these. These shelves here were from Kmart. These ones here are from Ikea, and they are so much better than... Look how tiny these shelves are. Like, I thought they were big, and then I brought these in, and it's like, whoa, they are massive. They're so good. I have no idea what it's called. I, it's like a bookshelf. I don't know what the name is. Like maybe Billy? Billy Bookshelf? These are from AliExpress. I think the name was Yolala or something. Yolala store. But I mean, you can find them from other people. But I just like shopping with them because, you know, they shipped quite fast. And I really like the quality of them. The big ones are great. The small ones are also great. The medium are the most flimsy. I don't know. They're just bendier. But these ones are like super sturdy and those ones are super sturdy. So I was really happy with them and they were quite cheap. And you know, I would get like discounts on AliExpress as well if you look at discount codes. Anyway, these are empty. I just put them up last night when I cleaned the room. In here I have my Cricut mini press and an iron. I use those for bows and masks. I quite like the mini press. It's really good um, for like a quick solution. But if I'm doing a lot, I do prefer getting out the iron. In here I have my petite scrunchie scrap. I have a heap of stuff for the Munbin, which is my thermal printer. I have a heap of circle stickers. They're all my white ones. Uh, and then I have colored ones, which I haven't used yet. They are rectangle, like really little ones, rectangle. And they are another circle and bigger rectangles. 
Then over here I have a heap of just labels. I'm pretty sure these are labels too. Yeah, they would be. So they're the, just the 4x6 shipping labels, which I also use for stickers. In here I've got like my thank you cards, which I'm actually running low on. I really need to order more of those because they won't last me long at all. Business cards. I don't put business cards in my orders anymore. I usually just use them for markets. My elastic. So I do have elastic in a different cupboard. But I've just got a little bit of a stockpile here as well. This elastic I can't use because it's the wrong sort. It's way too dense. Um, I was sent it by accident. And it's just been sitting in here. I don't know. I should probably try and sell it. I was using that for mask elastic. But it actually melts. So I don't like that elastic much they're just mostly scrap elastics and like little pieces which i could use for mini scrunchies or scrunchie packs that i have in here is my pre-cut as you can see i don't have much left so usually i just um i cut the whole roll so they come in like 50 meters or something and i cut them underneath that's my thin elastic so i use white elastic for my scrunchies and i've also got thin elastic then we've got mask elastic which i think i have way too much of considering I think we're coming out of the mask situation. I don't know. But yeah, I have heaps of white and I've got heaps of black and I've got even more white up the top. And usually I just grab it out like this. Okay, next shelf. Oh yeah, and I've also got these tubes here. So there's a few there. Okay, these ones, I use these for my scrunchie stands. So they're just pre-cut pieces of corrugated cardboard. In this one here, it's mostly just supplies such as my satchels, white paper bags. There's a few other things in there, but it's mostly just packaging satchels. In this, this is what I use to package. Uh, it's a little bit messy at the moment. But yeah, I have my scales, I have sticky tape, express tape. I have my stickers, so I make those with my mun bin. So I've got that one. And I have these, which I cut them in half and put them on the boxes. I have my thank you cards. I have stamps. I also have some lollies, but I don't I don't really like the mint mentos. I haven't actually been putting them in. I do like to put stickers in, but I've also run out of them and I can't bother making any more right now. Um, so yeah, sometimes I put like freebies in sometimes i don't just depends on what i have available uh, i have my like return address for the letters poly bags i only use them for letters so that um squish down and save i do much prefer using parcels now so if i can i'll put orders in parcels it depends what the customer has ordered and what the customer has paid for shipping if they're paid for tracking or just like normal shipping they're tracked envelopes which i also offer they're just lunch bags so i Sometimes put products in those if they're going in the envelopes, but it really depends on what the product is because it usually ends up too puffy, so I have to use the plastic. This one, I just have another spare one of those and some remnants that I got from Spotlight. That's my camera bag, which I should be using when I go on holiday, hopefully. In this one, I have a heap of Cricut stuff. I don't really use the Cricut much though, so yeah, that just stays there. I've got these. I haven't been through this since I moved into this house. This is just fabrics that ended up with a hole in it. Um, so I sewed too close to the edge and it's got like a hole somewhere. These ones, oh yeah, these were my XL scrunchies, my older style. So they're probably cut a little bit too small and like they're also like scrap. I've got heaps of different fabrics down here as well. Most of these aren't on the website, like the gingham is, but a lot of these like kitty prints aren't. They're just really popular at, at the market, so that's where I have them. Uh, this is the fabric glue I use. I purchase it directly from the supplier, which is Helma. I use the fabric glue to glue the bows and also to hold my elastic in place. Then we have my Cricut Maker. I use that to make my stickers. And yeah, I've got like just all the tools and stuff for that. They're the proper Cricut tools here. So I got some more spare ones. The spare ones are really good for just chucking stuff in. So I just leave them and they look nice on the shelf. These are balloons like that. I usually like deflate them and put them back in here. So I have a heap of different numbers in there. I use those for birthdays or for when I like reach a milestone. And by this, by the time this video is posted, I'll probably be on 40,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. This one, we've got heaps of mini scrunchies that are already pre-sewn. There's some like that aren't, but yeah, mostly pre-sewn ones in there. In this one, it's bows. And I also have the thread in there somewhere as well with the needle. Yeah, they're mostly just cut to size. In here, I've got my pom-poms. I use those for mostly 
pom-pom bows. I do sometimes make the scrunchy pom-pom scrunchies, but yeah, I don't particularly like those as much anymore. I really still like the pom-pom bows though. They look so cute. These are my clips. They're mostly alligator clips that are 45 millimeter, which I also got from AliExpress or Alibaba. I think it was AliExpress though. So I got some random clips in there. There's a whole bunch of random stuff in here. Here things. <laughs> uh, some more ink old sign. Those, yeah, there's just heaps of stuff. I got some more poly bags. Oh, heaps of poly bags. Glue gun. My old mask things. Because I uh, made my mask like templates like myself. So they're not actually from somewhere. Somewhere. Um, yeah, just a whole bunch of random stuff in there. So that's my random, random box. I don't use, I don't like them. They are like, yeah, they're like that. Over this way, there's machine oil. I use that for my normal domestic machines. The one at the back there, that is for industrial machines. Um, got some fray stopper. I don't really use that for anything uh, anymore. I've used it for some of my personal items before. And then I've got some fabric glue and they're both pretty much empty. I think I've just kept them for backups. Usually when it gets down to like, I don't know if you can see where it is. Yeah, you'll be able to tell that in the camera. It doesn't come out. It's like too hard. Okay, up here we've got, in this top one, there's just materials that are plain colors and that I use them for plain bows. In this one, it's literally pieces like that. And I use those for mini scrunchies. I did use them for tied bows when I made tied bows back in the day, uh, like two or three years ago, but I've uh, discontinued that line. In this one, it's mostly Christmas and some more of the plain colors. And this one's just Christmas. So all my Christmas fabrics, I don't need to have those out. I'm not really a Christmassy person. So yeah, they're hidden away. <laughs> I don't want to look at them. And then up the top, so I've got a heap of this velvet, it's very thick, so I couldn't put it underneath my tables. And they're just some spare boards that I've got up there. Moving on to here, I have these. I got this from AliExpress. It is super nifty. I think I paid less than a dollar and I got two of them. And I've just put all my bobbins in there. At the moment, I'm only using white and black. Will I change in the future? Maybe, maybe not. In here, I think, yeah, there's still heaps of new thread. So this is sort of like my random pile of stuff. Got heaps of labels, more labels underneath here in this. And then in here, I have more cards, but these are for my, like thank you cards for my merch line. Uh, I use them for the merch. Those, I've been using this for the mini scrunchies. I don't really like it for the mini scrunchies because it's not really that stretchy, but I've been using that anyway. And yeah, these are just random fabrics and random stuff down there. Okay, up to the Juki machine. Uh, the Juki machine is a the DDL 8000A. I absolutely adore it. It goes really fast. Doesn't go as fast as advertised. Only goes 4,000 stitches per minute, not 5,000. I wish it did 5,000, but oh well, what can you do? I've already got it home. <laughs> so yeah, the reason I wanted this machine was because of the really fast stitches. I didn't really care about anything else. I just wanted it to be fast and it's still not fast enough. So I'm just gonna turn it on. I don't know much about the different things it does, but all I know is this is how to change the stitches <laughs> and this thing. So see how it's got like the N or well, it looks like an N back with N. That's the back stitch and I can do double back stitch or I can turn it off completely and same with the ending. I'd use that for my XL sometimes. I don't do it for my closing stitches because I don't need to because I put it on one millimeter and it doesn't open. Yeah, that is my personal preference. Uh, some people will disagree, but that is what I do. Or you can use back stitch if you want to. I see a lot of people will probably use a two or a three. What I use to actually sew the scrunchies is usually around a three to do the tubes. And down here we have a pedal and we have a knee one so if I like move this it moves the foot up so I can do that with my knee and then this if I press obviously go and if I press back it will uh, cut the thread so it has an automatic thread cutter which is really cool as well um, underneath here not much there is a bin two of them actually because I usually have a bin over the other side I have a heap of spotlight fabrics which I won't use because they're mostly knits. Here's I was gonna bring out uh, baby headbands, which I didn't. Oh, and also has automatic bobbin winder, which is cool. 
it is a little bit annoying uh, to like set up continuously and like have to remember to do it. Uh, you can do it through here, but you have to like put this this latch up to make sure it doesn't hurt the plate because this goes this goes when you try and wind this up. So yeah, it's easier to do it while you're sewing. Okay, so I've got some new glue, some hand sanitizer in my favorite type, which is Japanese cherry blossom. We've got my old labels back there, which are the ones I used to make. I used to hand make all my labels. It's the first video on my channel, so you can go check that out if you want. Uh, also, it does get a little bit linty over this way, just because this is exactly where I'm sewing. It doesn't get really linty anywhere else in the room. Just really this, right, like right here is where it gets linty. It's just like fabric fibers, uh, which is fine. I just usually wipe that up. and no, I forgot to do the um, machines, these ones. Machines? The printers last night when I was cleaning up. Okay, so we've got a few different pieces in there. I'm going to do a video on like different stuff that I use. I don't know what you call them. I'm having a mind blank. But different... I'm going to say utensils. That's like a kitchen thing, you know. Um, tools. Tools that I use for the business. I'm going to do a video on that. Uh, so I won't go through them completely. Oh, but this I will go through. This is a bobkin. It's from Clover. It is the best thing you'll ever have. Go search it on Google. I don't know. I just buy it from random places. I've got three. So whenever I feel like I want one, I will just go search Clover Bobkin and look at the first place that pops up on Google and buy it from there. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, they heap of random places sell it. And a lot of the places, if I try and go back to the same place, uh, they're sold out. So I just buy it from random places. Um, all right, so we've got a heap of different pieces in here which are pre-cut. But most of these are from my old scrunchie style, which is way shorter and... Yeah, so a lot of these I can't use. There is a sum in there that I can, but I haven't found the need to go through it. They're mostly scraps or like, you know, Halloween, Christmas stuff. Up here. So this is also a mess up here. This I've had for seven, or actually eight years now. I've had it since the start of my business. Uh, it is still going great. <laughs> this is like a pencil case that I'm using, which was from cash sale cash sale which is someone that was at the market that I was at and I bought it from them I got some more like different pieces up here screwdriver and all that jazz I got tracked envelopes which are like the big ones I have I have this these are from the post office actually you can get them for free from a lot of the post offices they are free for anyone with a business account I think but it's only some post offices that will allow it. I think it might be not the standalone ones. Like the, so like there's two different types of Oz post post offices. There's ones that are owned privately and ones that are owned like as a franchise. Uh, I can't remember which one it is, but some people allow it, some people don't. But there's sticker paper for like printers, so you can print out your labels. Obviously, I have a mun bin, but for international, they print A5, so you have to have sticker paper, or you can just sticker tape it on, but I like sticker paper better. Okay, up here, there is um, a laminator up the top, because I use that to laminate my stickers. I've got a heap of Cricut boards up here. Uh, they're like laminated sheets, which are sticking out, which I'll pop back in there. We've got receipts. I don't even know if you can see, because I can't see. Receipts. Uh, so it's like all my receipts that I keep. I take photos of them every three months and I do my back statements. Uh, international, I used to use those when I first started sending international parcels. Doesn't even look like there's any in there. Oh yeah, they're in here. So that's what they used to look like. But now I do everything through Ozpost because I get a massive discount. And back in the day, before COVID hit, you could send these on like envelopes overseas for three dollars twenty so i could send my products overseas for that cheap and they haven't really brought that they haven't brought that back no they have allowed documents only uh and under five millimeter so yeah they haven't brought that back people are protesting about it <laughs> um satchels which i think i've got some yeah express satchels in there i don't use them anymore because they're more expensive than doing it the way i do it now tracked envelopes these ones are for my stickers because they're only for under 5mm somewhere. I oh, know it says it up there. Yeah, up the top there, 5mm. The others are for 20mm. Got my display cards. 
So one's like that. So I put my bows and stuff on there. I make them myself, as you can tell, because they're lopsided. Um, my transfer paper, I don't really use anymore because I now have my own labels, like made from a manufacturer, uh, Ali Barber. I can't remember the manufacturer's name, but you can definitely have a look on there. There's heaps of people on there available. Um, cardstock. I use those for market signs and my display cards. A4 paper. I need to refill that with this. <laughs> Uh, sticker paper, so there's random sticker papers in there. Um, mostly got those from eBay. Okay, now we've got the printers. So there is the Canon TR8660. I use that for my stickers and I use that for display signs and things that are important. Um, the Canon MG3560. I use those for things that I don't really care about that much. Um, like the DIY tutorial things um, that I print out doesn't have to be like the best quality. Um, I use those for shipping labels, that sort of stuff. Stuff that doesn't need to be like 100% like perfect. And then I have my Munbin, which I absolutely adore and I love. I've had for I think over six months now. I have had questions. Do you still love it? Yes, I do. I absolutely adore it. Uh, it's perfect for shipping out my Australia Post labels. Um, I have still haven't been able to figure out how to do the barcodes, uh, the QR code works, not the barcode, but I haven't had any issues and I've shipped hundreds and hundreds of orders with the Munbin this way, so obviously it's still fine to use, uh, and I also use it for my stickers, which is a bonus, I've saved so much money. This I've left empty because I usually chuck my scrunchies in there, this annoys me, I probably could put something there to stop it because when I'm sewing it goes straight in there. Uh, so I usually try and like, after my first tube, I'll line it up so it doesn't fall. <laughs> okay, continuing on. Down here, I have my light box. Light box I got from JB Hi-Fi. Uh, it was $99 and I highly recommend it. It is really good quality. Uh, the only thing is, it says it has a dimmer. It does not. It burns your eyeballs out. Then we've got this one. That's my flip stick my dad made me. It is the best thing ever. <laughs> you can get similar things from Kmart. Uh, I think they're like donut poles or I don't know. Just like a stick with something on top. Perfect for flipping scrunchies if you make them like the... Um, not the burrito way. I don't know what you'd call it the other way. I call it the my OG method. Um, but obviously it isn't called that for everyone else. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what you'd normally call that. Ones with tubes. I've got this little drawer that just has bits and pieces in here like snippets and yeah a couple bits and pieces for the machine i haven't been able to buy another chair yet so i've been using the one from the kitchen the kitchen one doesn't go with anything in here so i don't really like it in here but like i mean there's a chair shortage shortage or something because kmart just doesn't have the chair i want in ever i have my mat this is from fiskars it's good mat yeah it's pretty big i don't genuinely leave it on the table my, this one is my another chair that I used to use in the craft room. I've just left it in here because it has stuff inside of it, like bags. Um, I bought this. It's really cool because it has USB bits, so I don't have to have so much stuff in here. And it also has like the gap, which is really cool too. Now we're starting on this side. Actually, I might do this from the other side because it looks nicer on the other side. I just have backup boxes on this side, and then I have my like electrical stuff so i've got my boss headphones highly recommend them they i don't know they're just so much better before i was using proper like earmuffs with my airpods and they hurt my ears so much but these don't hurt my ears at all the only thing is they get a little bit sweaty which i know it's gross but i don't know because of the leather or whatever it is around there okay and then ah, got more cords and stuff in here mostly just to keep it nice and neat so my sewing machine cords, like Apple stuff. Okay, on this side, so there's actually some orders underneath here. I've just hidden away. But I have tissue paper. So I've got on here tissue paper, which I really love. Sorry, you can't really see because it keeps, yeah, doing that. Um, tissue paper. This I had in my old desk and I just, I needed to have it in this one. So we designed it so I could have my laptop and my personal stuff in this side and then I have my tissue paper which I can easily grab out to do packaging orders and then I have all my fabrics which are so pretty so I've got all of these like that 
And then here I have some more boxes. I have two sizes of boxes. Uh, don't ask me what they are because I can't remember. Uh, well, two sizes of the pink ones. They are from EB Packaging Australia. So they're pretty cool. Um, these ones are also from, well, they're all from EB Packaging. These ones are bigger box uh, for parcels. These, that's an A4 mailer, A5 mailer, CD mailer. So they're all letter mailers. And we've got up here, got heaps of scrunchies. So I decided to put XLs in this wall because I thought they'd look better. And they'll last longer, I guess, being in there. They're easier to fill up, is what I'm getting at. Start from this side, because it's the most messy. Okay, so we've got heaps of scraps up here. So they're just scrap fabrics. I usually use those for hair bows. Uh, they're the fabrics I got from April Scrunchies, so Sophie. Uh, I haven't had time to, like, sort of go through them and make stuff out of them yet. Um, I've got up here, they're, like, my clearance scrunchies. Um, so they're really cheap, so go check them out, but they're just like really small, like like the scrunchies I used to make like years ago. More fabrics, which are just like too bulky to put in the wall. These fabrics here, these are offcuts from my XLs that are velvet, because velvet is too thick to do the full uh, amount. So yeah, these are all offcuts, which can be made into my regular size scrunchies. These are less than probably 30 centimeters, so I'm almost out of the fabrics that are in these boxes. Uh, so I just put them there because they're too small to put on the board and I don't want to lose them. So they're all in one spot except the ones that are on that trolley. <laughs> Here, I've got some tubes, heaps of tubes in there, so they're all pre-sewn. These are almost made. Um, I think, have I sewn the elastic in these? Wait, oh, I don't know. Yeah, all the elastic in these have been sewn. I just need to sew the labels in. And they're all thin elastic ones. Uh, I got my towel fabrics. My They're all pre-cuts, so I need to just sew them into tubes for my regular size scrunchies. Down here, got mostly bow stuff. So pre-cut bows, pre-cut minis. These are all bow fabrics. So I've got heaps of those still. And then that's just really thick fabric which is like vel it's not velvet it's minky minky stuff here's some more boxes so light pink light pink and down there is oh my big boxes so they're all my boxes that i use for shipping okay on this side what have we got we've got more fabric up the top more fabric up the top um they were baby headbands which i decided not to go with at the moment i'm not really interested in making them um this is where I keep my stickers. It's really disorganized. I literally just have them just sitting in there. And I also have my DIY pack stuff that I use. Uh, the next one's mostly fold over elastic that are already pre-made. Yeah, just a bunch of stuff up there. These ones are mini scrunchies. So they're pre-cut and they're almost pre-cut. They're more like scraps, but I just need to cut them a little bit smaller to make the scrunchies out of. All of these, they're all my market stuff. This box here is actually just spare scrunchies that I have. I squished them in because I had two boxes and they wouldn't fit in the cupboard. So, and they're almost, almost enough to put in. So I just put them all in here. Yeah, I don't usually take that one to markets, but I'll take scrunchies out of it to put in these boxes, which are here. Okay, further down. I got my mask fabrics. So they're in those two boxes. They are completely separate from my normal fabric range and they're also pre-washed. Then I have my DIY packs, so I have how to make scrunchies, they are like hand sewn ones though. And I have folder over elastic, which I used to make hair ties, which um, fold over elastic hair ties. And I also have those as well, which are baby headbands in there. And I have a small, very small ironing board, and I've just put like this, <laughs> this over the top, because it's like stained and stuff from the, yeah, it looks gross. And it just, I've tried to wash it and it doesn't come out. And I don't have, I don't know where you can get another one. Maybe Etsy might make them. I don't know. I could make one myself, but am I going to? No. And then I've got my calendar up here. So I'll be going to Tassie soon. I had to cancel my Queensland trip. <laughs> but now we're going to Tassie um, there. And then we're leaving for Queensland here. So I'll be home for like here to do Merbu. 
um, and Pakenham's still happening because my mum's doing it. That was so much talking, oh my goodness. And before we get on with the questions, I'd just like to thank my sponsor for this video, which is Daniel Wellington. They have very kindly gifted me this very chic and petite, beautiful watch with a square face. This watch inspires a vintage feel and it's very 70s style, almost like minimalistic. It's not like super out there. It's just something that will go with everything. You can really pair it with any day sort of outfits or if you're going out, which is why I chose the gold color with the white. I thought it just would be really easy to pair with outfits. You can shop the new 70s style Quadro Studio watches and the whole new collection from danielwellington.com. And I also have a coupon code for you guys to get 15% off. You can enter the code word Taylor. Also, I have to show you the packaging because I I love when I when stuff comes in beautiful packaging. I received a very sleek black box. It's got Daniel Wellington embossed into this. I don't know if you're about to see. And then we've got this one, which has gold, and it's a very sturdy box. And that's where the watch was. And it has like a little tag on it too like that so yeah it's just i love packaging experiences if you're after a very beautiful watch with a 70s inspired feel to it go check out daniel wellington and use the code code's also in description with a link so you can go check them out from there thank you so much okay i'm gonna sit in this corner i know it's probably dark and like dingy because it's just it's so bright in here but we're gonna go through some of these questions I received last night. I'm gonna start off with the first one, which wasn't a question, but it was from Sophie. About time, girlfriend. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I promised this video ages ago, but it's it's finally coming out, so sorry. Um, all right, let's go through these. So there's quite a few questions here. I may not get to them all, especially some that don't really relate to this sort of video, but I will save them for a different video with questions and answers I'm doing. How many pre-made scrunchies do you have? Good question. No idea. <laughs> maybe around 500 pre-made at the moment, maybe 600, um, which does sound like a lot, but I do sell quite a bit at markets and online. So it doesn't actually last me that long. So I have to keep, really keep onto it. Especially with the scrunchie wall, I want to try and keep that full. How did you organize your studio so it would work for you and be convenient, easy access? So the way I've laid it out, uh, this side on, over this side, it's more for my packaging less for making so that's why I've got my boxes on this side I've got my tissue paper I've got access to scrunchies if I need it and I've got access to scrunchies behind me because they're in the cupboards that's the reason I've put the packaging on this side the other side um, I'll just take you for a walk so there's still heaps of space all along here I actually usually sit at the end of this table right here with um, my chair which is currently this chair I usually sit here, um, but I did make a lip. Oh my God, it's so bright. But I did make a lip underneath here, so I could sit under here if I wanted to with like leg space. This side is mostly for making the scrunchies. Also, lots of room. Um, I don't really like a cluttered feel, which is why I didn't end up putting the table in the middle because it would have been, it would have made the room feel smaller, I think. I think with the table in the middle last time, it made the room feel smaller, even though it was great to have access from all points. But this is plenty of room. Um, I find, yeah, I, ha I've, I love how much space I have with this table. And yeah, I can easily um, chuck stuff from here straight onto the table if I need. And yeah, there's just plenty of room. Sometimes I have boxes all along here, um, which are just out of the way, but yeah, still, still close by, which I can grab. And these are obviously very close I can just grab them, put them straight onto the table. It's set up in a way which is convenient for me. The only thing I would probably change, but I can't because of the room situation, is having like my mun bin and like my printers on this side because this is where I do the packaging, but that's fine. What camera do you use for your YouTube videos? I have a Canon, Canon, <laughs> Canon G7X and I highly recommend it. I really like. I really like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Do you find your IKEA table big enough to cut fabric and stuff? Yes, it is perfect size. Um, I can fit, I can roll fabric so much easier. The width of the table is longer than the fabric, so I can roll fabric so easily onto like the big bolts and cut it easily. If it's if it's on the big bolts, I can just roll it out. It's just really easy. Only thing I'd probably get a bigger mat, but then again, I don't really need a bigger mat, so I haven't got one. It's only really for if I wanted to use the um, the roller, the roller, the, the cutter roller, 
<laughs> for cutting these fabrics, but I usually just use scissors if it's on the bolts. Also, I think I'll get this question, which I don't think it's been asked, but I'll answer it anyway. Um, the table is made from two IKEA 8 cube units. It has pieces of wood, thick pieces of wood, um, which is looks like this. I don't even know if you can see that. So it looks like that. Also, I didn't paint that because I couldn't be bothered. But um, yeah, it looks like that. Uh, so that's holding up the top. Um, like it's all screwed in and stuff. But that's giving me more height. And then down the bottom, I've also got the exact same wood. Except they're, instead of facing that way, they're facing that way. Because I found it was a little bit too high once we had set it all up um, in here. So yeah, I've just, I just lowered it a little bit. But it's perfect height for me. It's like at my hip. I found that I my back is less strained. So much less strained. I haven't had any back pain since uh, changing this all around. Uh, cutting is a breeze. It is so much easier. Yeah. Highly recommend a table this high. Oh, and my brother made it. <laughs> so if you haven't checked out my, my other video, go check it out. It's from January. Uh, I think like just making my room or something. I don't know what it's called. But it's me. Me in the front. Like making these... Uh, flat packs. But yeah, my brother put it all together. Um, the only thing I've changed about it is I really need to varnish the top because I did try and beeswax it, but I messed up the beeswax. It just didn't work. So I want to try and varnish it, but I also want to do a white coat, um, like a washed white, because I don't like this color and it comes up so orange in all my videos and like all my photos. Like I like to put saturation up and it just doesn't work very well. Does the space layout work for you or do you need a bigger, better space? Um, this does work for me. I'm really, really enjoying this space. I'm finding it super easy to manoeuvre. It's so much better than the old one. Um, and I feel like it's, it feels bigger to me because it just feels like more space, which is really good. I feel like I've utilised this space really well. Um, obviously the farm was a lot bigger, but this is so much better. I do have a lot of stuff in that hallway and in the hallway cupboard though, not everything's in here. And also in the garage I have two shelves in there but it's mostly market stock in there. Super random but I was watching a video where you said your dog sitting flow uh, and then next one she was living with you. How did you come to have her? Okay, so Flo is Reese's dog. Um, she was three months old when I met Reese, and we moved in quite soon because he works uh, fly in fly out so it just made sense for me and us being in a relationship to move in because I was already, already there for the two weeks that he was gone every time he went um, and then I was staying for those extra two weeks while he was home because I wanted to see him so yeah it just made sense for me to move in I think it was like, like two or three or four I don't know how many months it was before I actually moved in properly I moved the craft studio in first before I actually moved myself in which I know sounds silly but it was just so much easier for me to do all my work here because I was literally carrying my um i didn't have an industrial back then but i was carrying all my sewing machines here like fabrics i'd forget stuff at home like if you watch videos back um probably like this time last year like a little bit um later even uh there would be videos where i'm like oh my god i forgot this scrunchie oh, i forgot this oh my god i can't do this order because i forgot yeah so it's just so much easier moving in and yeah best decision but that is why I was looking after Flo and then all of a sudden I was I actually live here now so um and this is yeah this is Reese's house and like obviously Reese's room we want to build but this is a very very brand new house so I don't want to like push him to build a new house with me I'm very happy just to live here for a couple more years uh just when we're ready to actually build a proper big big house uh with a big big studio and I think a lot of the reason was because of this. You may remember in one of my older videos, I was complaining about how this space wasn't working for me. And I really needed a different space, a bigger, bigger space. But since I've changed it, since I got the new industrial, since I got this new table, it's literally made my life so much different and it's so much better. So I feel like this definitely works, works for me so much more. Do you count the scrunchies in the wall? No. <laughs> There, there, I think there should be around 180 in this wall um, because most of them have at least five some of them have six or eight so and then some of them do have less but that's because I've already taken stuff out were dusted on scrunchies that's a good question uh, no <laughs> um, because this is a brand new house there is no dust if anything there is lint and fibers but 
they just it really doesn't get on there and it's fabric anyway it's doesn't it's not dirty dusty if i was to do this at the farm there is no way i'll do it at the farm because the farm is 180 years old is dusty like dust would develop within a day but here literally it takes weeks for me to even like do that and have anything and it's lint um from the sewing machine i'm not concerned about that whatsoever if anything like markets gets more dust on them <laughs> than in here are you hoping to expand or are happy with the space currently i'm really happy with the space currently I did really want to expand more probably at the end of last year. I was really sick of this um, this area, but since renovating it, I'm just so happy with it and it's working so well for me. Um, definitely in the future, and I've been saying that for like past year, I do want to build, but yeah, just current situations, um, I don't want to build right now. Um, I've decided. <laughs> we just we don't need to build. Like the house is perfect. Um, we don't. Like the house it works for us so we don't really need it right now where did you get your cutting table from so i think i've already i did actually already mention i guess where i got it from um and how it was made how many sewing machines do you have so i've got three sewing machines one embroidery machine and i use the juki ddl 8000a highly recommend an industrial machine if you have like a proper business or even if you're a hobby sewer it is so good how do you take your photos for your website um recently i have just gone a light box so i've been using that and it's made a massive difference but most of the photos on the website are actually from my phone or from my camera but i've used like a, a white sheet in the background so i definitely recommend the light box it just makes life so much easier and a camera it does they they do make a difference for the quality any organization tips for storing materials and stock um Clear boxes help so much and especially if you don't have like a newer house like because obviously older houses they have a lot of dust and even like houses that are a few years old so I probably won't be able to do this forever <laughs> with the stuff showing but um yeah the definitely clear boxes because then you can see what's inside of it uh boxes that are colored it's really hard to see so that is my biggest tip and if you're putting fabrics in a box, make sure that you're folding them in a way that you can actually see what the fabrics are um, from the outside. So don't put like a small piece right in the middle and like you can't see it from each side. Um, like fold it in a way that maybe like you got fabrics on one side and fabrics on the other side and you can see everything. What's your favourite and least favourite thing about your room? Uh, favourite thing? Probably I have too many favourite things. Oh my god. The table. The juki, the fabric wall, and the, and the scrunchy wall. They're my favourites. Um, my least favourite thing is this section right here. <laughs> it just looks ugly. Um, but what can you do? Like, there's there's things that you can't really help. They're just how they look. Um, yeah, I just think it's ugly. Did you feel the gap in the scrunchy wall? Uh, I think... Is this referring to this gap? No. If, if that's what it's referring to, I haven't. Um, because I have my my these things down there so that's why i've been putting down there and i don't really have any more space to put them elsewhere it was, i don't know I, I measured it and it wouldn't it's like this much too big to put another one in what did you use to raise your bench i just use like pieces of wood what other pots for on top of the scrunchy wall oh my gosh i can't believe you noticed that um so i have pots up there <laughs> i don't know if you can see i wanted to put like plants in them or something like even fake plants because I want to be able to keep real plants alive. Oh, I mean, we have so many real plants in there, but I mean, it's too too high to water and like, what if it goes on the scrunchies? So anyway, I was going to put fake plants in there, but I just haven't got around to it yet. The difference on how many customers during market day before and right after lockdown. Um, honestly, there's more customers now than ever before, in my opinion. But the, it does depend on a lot of things. Like, it depends on the location and how well it's advertised and stuff. But I remember straight after one of the lockdowns i did a melbourne one that one had five thousand people come through like it was absolutely insane how many people came through uh after the lockdown the melbourne lockdown and i did so well that day but any other day that i've gone that one i haven't done well at all i've barely made over a couple hundred dollars uh which i know is still a lot to people but yeah i i have an expectation like that i set out to get well, especially if I do Melbourne ones that cost quite a bit of money. How do you re-roll fabric onto bolts? It really helps to have a really big table. Like enough space to do it. Um, 
I, I don't know, I just straighten up the fabric and I just very carefully roll it uh, and make sure there's no creases and stuff. How do you organize your packaging items, pens, etc. into baskets? Um, so I already kind of showed you guys. I have those. They're $2 from Kmart. They're like little buckets, black buckets. And then I also have my crate that has all my packaging supplies. Which section did you have a vision for, but it just wasn't working out how you saw it in your head? Honestly, everything worked out. <laughs> Every, everything that I wanted, so the table, the that wall, um, which has all the pink crates, this wall all turned out exactly how I imagined. Do you miss your old setup back at the farm? Also, can you tell me how you went about getting insurance for the market? Okay, so did I miss, miss my old setup? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Compared to here, no. Um, I don't miss it at all. I did miss it because I missed the high table and I missed the space. But now I feel like I have... I just have so much more space. I've, I've utilized the space so well. I don't miss the farm at all. And as I said, the farm was old and like dusty. So it's just so much cleaner here and it's easier to keep clean. I don't know. It's just so much nicer. Here. Um, and how did you get insurance for market? So there's two types of insurance um, that I have. There's public liability insurance and then there's product insurance. Product insurance doesn't mean insurance that you'd get if your products got destroyed. It means insurance that you would get if your products hurt someone. Obviously scrunchies, I really doubt anyone would be sued over scrunchies, but bows I do sell. So bows got clips, clips get choking hazard, you know. So that's why I have insurance for product insurance. You don't need product insurance, but highly recommend it, especially with certain products. You just don't know what would happen. As for market insurance, public liability, I have both together through a broker. I think it's it was through the Victorian Woodworkers Association and they just um, found a broker for me. That's who I use. Public liability, it's recommended to get over 20, or oh, you get the 20 mil, not the 10 mil, especially depending on where you live. Uh, for me, I think there's only been one spot that I've ever even inquired about that needed 20 mil. Everywhere else only needs 10 mil. But if you get close to the city, a lot of the city ones need 20 mil or shopping centers, for example. So it really depends on yeah, what your business sells and stuff. How practical do you think the storage is? Everything that I've done is super practical for me. Just, I can visually see all my fabrics. I can grab everything easily the tissue paper is like right there i can grab that if i'm packaging up stuff also my boxes right here so i can grab them i used to have all my boxes in a corner and have to like go and sort through them and pick ones that i want out now i've got them all organized in the sizes all separated and just storage even like the pink crates the pink crates i chose because i wanted it to look nice in my background for the videos and yeah it just looks lovely and it's also neat it's like less cluttered so i'm really happy with everything anyway i think this video is now going to go for so long so <laughs> if you stayed to the end thank you so much again thank you very much for daniel wellington for gifting me this watch it is so pretty i think the only thing that i want now is a chair oh before i go here's some interesting facts that you may not have known did you know that chairs they go up and down they have gas cylinders in them or something that makes that do that makes it go up and down and it doesn't last forever that is why my white chair has broke because it's running out of the gas because i was reading about the draftsman chair from uh office works and they had so low reviews and i was like why has it got such low reviews they only last like eight months if that and you can't refill the canisters so you're paying like nearly 300 dollars for a chair that only lasts a couple months to do its job because the whole point of the draftman chair if you, you can go up and down. So I thought that was very interesting. Let me know in the comments below if you knew that or if you didn't know that because I didn't know that and I just found that very interesting I wanted to share with you guys. But yeah, I do want another chair so I can put this one back in the kitchen because it really looks odd with two chairs at the kitchen bench. <laughs> Needs three. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think below. Uh, let me know if you think if you like the setup, if you don't like the setup. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. No, I'm so glad I did this. All up, I think the room cost me probably about $1,000. Maybe a little bit less. Because I think the stuff from Ikea was $500. The table, stuff for the table was another $100, $200. Um, the crates, probably another $150. Like, I'm talking about the room change, not the everything in here. That's my studio tour.
Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!